I, I consider personally one of your biggest accomplishments bringing Mitch Daniels to Purdue. Um, so, so, so tell us about how you got involved with the Board of Trustees and what made you even think you could get this guy? I mean, uh -huh. I mean for those By the way, know, Mitch was considered a presidential candidate of the United States, very seriously. And he was city governor of Indiana. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, by the way, that your quote about not knowing uh, that you can't, you can't do something or whatever. The, the Chanel. Was, yeah, the, the, Chanel the quote, uh, yes. I call it the Coco quote, but yeah. uh, the Coco quote will come back. And so, you know, the way I got on the uh, board of trustees, um, so after I left Ariba, it was kind of giving back time, and I ended up to be the, um, the international president of the Sigma Chi fraternity, which was great, a great way to give back, and it's like, you know, that was my one thing. And then um, the night uh, I was gonna hand back, I get a call from a guy named Mark Lovers, and uh, he, he was in- Who I went to business school with. Yeah, yeah, that's right, he was in your class. That's right, Small world. Purdue guy, yeah. I guess, man. yeah, he's great. And so he calls me up and he, and he goes, Croc, the governor would like to talk to you next time you're in Indiana about putting you the, on the board of trustees. What do you think? I go, I will consider that a great honor. And absolutely, friggin' lutely. And, uh, and, I, and I go, as a matter of fact, I have a board meeting in Detroit, so uh, come on by. He goes, okay, great, that would be great. And then I go, uh, Who's the governor of Indiana? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, I don't know, man. Um, so I met him, fell in love with him, and you know, went on the board. And then, I, you know, I, be I became the chairman after serving two years uh, on the board. And then it was, uh, and France, you know, France was there, and uh, I mean, worked. Uh, France Cordova. Yeah, France Cord Cordova, who's now director of the National Science Foundation, which, by the way, hands out over 50% of the research grants to all the AAU schools, all the big researchers. That's nice to have President Purdue right in that spot, isn't it? Is that, is that a conflict of interest? Uh, well, no, she's beyond reproach. Yeah, I was with her three weeks ago in Washington. But um, so, uh, so uh, she announced that uh, you know, she was moving on. And they had a press conference. I couldn't be there because I was in California, but I was on the speaker phone because the press, you know, they want to ask questions, both of us. So, uh, boom, that ends. And then uh, my wife and I were going uh, a long drive in a, in a car, and uh, all of a sudden the calls come in from the press, right? And all of a sudden, you know, U.S. News and uh, West Lafayette Journal and Courier Report. You know, a guy calls me up and he goes, he goes, isn't that funny? I think that's funny. Uh, I always said that. Um, the guys were great. They were really, man, they knew everything. But um, you go, uh, is it true that you are going to hire Mitch Daniels as the governor of Indiana? And I go, absolutely not. I've never talked to him about it. I've never thought about it. Absolutely not. And then there were a couple other questions. And, uh -huh. and, and then it went off the call, and my wife's sitting right there. She goes, you got to hire Mitch. <laughs> I go, you're right. <laughs> that was her idea. <laughs> and so, you know, I, every time I, and I'd come into Indiana about once a month from out here, and uh, Mitch would always make time. So I'm like, I, uh, so I'm sitting down with Mitch. He goes, hey, uh, what are you going to do now, you old friends? Uh, I go, well, we have a search committee. See, a guy named Mike Berghoff, who's the chairman now, who's great, he's in charge of the search committee, but uh, my job is stealthily go after the impossibles. <laughs> oh, really? And I go, uh, and by the way, I think you should be the next president of Purdue. And I just wanted to see if he blinked. I mean, he was, he was, he was kind of uh, probably the lead Republican nominee at that time uh, for President of the United States. And uh, he didn't blink. He said, well, I'd like to stay in Indiana. And I'd never go be the president at IU. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. And that's what I said. You know, I took it right out of Dumb and Dumber. So you're telling me we have a chance. <laughs> I was gonna say in sales they call that a buy sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I use that one later. I, I mean, that, I mean that was funny. And so uh, I continued the conversation for six months. I didn't even tell anybody on the trustees. It was stealth. I mean, he was the governor of Indiana, right? Thinking about going. And then uh, 
after six months, I brought a couple of the trustees into the loop. And, um, and so, uh, I mean, he's continuing, man. And by the way, I codenamed him the Marlin. I, I have a gigantic fishing rod that Berghoff gave me in my office in my house that uh, says the Marlin because I nicknamed Mitch the Marlin. And I go, the Marlin, I go, you get him on the line, you, you got to reel him in, he's going to jump out of the water, he's going to dive deep, you might lose him. Get him. Yeah, you know, and by the way, if you get him close to the boat, get the hell out of him and get him in the boat. That was the <laughs> so we call him the Marlin. And, uh, and so, uh, so he kept having these meetings. And, uh, and he goes, uh, when do you need the President Steyer? I go, uh, June, that's when uh, Francis Lincoln got, got to come in June. He goes, uh, Keith, I'm the governor of Indiana, and I have a commitment until January. Uh, so, you know, you, you know, you, you, it, can't, it can't be me. And I go, we have a great provost. And by the way, the provost now is uh, President of Virginia Tech, Tim Sands. I go, he'd be a great, you know, 12 and a half, right? France was 12, right? The numbers, I go, he'd be a great 12 and a half. And, uh, and he goes, you know, I was thinking you might say that. I go, he can do it till January. He goes, that would allow me a chance to drive up on my Harley Davidson to Purdue, get to know everything. I learn everything. I already know about all, you know, the state legislator, all the alums, and I can uh, hit the ground running. And that's when I laid your line up. Now that Mitch is a buying signal. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, by the way, uh, one other story about Mitch. I'll tell you a compensation story. I'll tell you. We in a closed room, man. All right, no TV. I'll tell you. <laughs> By the way, so watch this. So now times, it comes time to uh, determine his compensation. And so, uh, and by the way, I mean, we get Mitch. It's all over. I mean, my criteria, the only time I talked to the search committee, I came in there, and Berghoff goes, what do you want? I said, I just went like this. I want to be three. Leadership, leadership, leadership. That's it. And so... Um, so, all right, time to negotiate. And I knew he's a master negotiator. The guy's like, he's very folksy, but the most intellectual guy. And, and so I figured, you always want the other guy to go first? So I figured I just sort of, we'll pay you anything. So yeah, anything, that's it. What do you think? And so they forced him to that position. He goes, because I, I, you know, I, I didn't know. And he goes, I'll tell you exactly what I want. I want my total compensation less than uh, France, the current president of Purdue. And of that total compensation, I want the most at risk in terms of variable than any president in the AAU. And I want it to be based off of five quantifiable metrics. And the number one, one is student affordability. He goes, the other four, you trustees can figure that out. I'm like, oh, geez, oh man. I mean. Uh, I think I made the right decision. Right? <laughs> and how cool is that? And by the way, I had fun. Uh, ah, this was a few years back, like uh, maybe uh, you know a year after he, he came on board. And they had like the International Association, like a trustees meeting here, and they said, Keith, come on, give a talk. You know, so you have the chairman of the boards of trustees from all the big universities, and you have the presidents. And when I told that story. It was clear who the chairman were, and it was clear who the president The chairman perk up, the president going, Ugh. <laughs> But that's leadership. And the, and the leadership position he took there is the same we took in student affordability, which is the same leadership uh, position in terms of online uh, education. Same in retraining the workforce. I mean, that's Purdue University Global is going to do that. Taking that great, everything at Purdue, and we're going to disrupt higher education to the benefit of our students, our alums, our faculty, everything. So anyway, obviously I like him. <laughs>